I want to start with Chromadex here, ticker CDXC. Absolute monster move here from 161 to the high of day today. 152% within 12 trading days here. And then again, closed up 135%. Three weeks ago, I posted this video here. I urge you to go take a look at it. Why was I so confident? Why do we have such a dialed plan at $1.50, at $1.60? We were screaming value as this company was trading at one times revenues. No debt, 20 to 30 million cash on the books, a tight cap structure, very legitimate business, over 100 million in R&D for their current product. Smart Money, again, was all over this. Five to 10 cent downside for over $1.50 to $2 upside. I will take that trade any day of the week, rain, sleet, or shine. That is the type of risk to reward we want. It made complete sense. It was a no-brainer, and I want to give you more opportunities like this where you really don't have to stress or worry. You get in here maybe a couple days of turbulence, and bang, it it goes. Not every stock you're going to buy is just going to go straight up. But this one was a very, very easy trade. Nobody, and I mean nobody, not one single person at $1.60 or below should have lost this trade in any way. This should be the easiest green profitable trade you see of the year. I mean, literally a straight shot up. Before we get into some incredible setups, if you don't mind, smash that like button, click and subscribe if you haven't. Also, turning on those post notifications, I'd greatly appreciate it. Now, the first one is Chromacell, ticker CHRO. I think this will be an easy double up, 100% return on your investment. That seems to be the trend with all the biotechs lately. Minimum 50%, upwards of 100% plus. Now, why do I feel that way? Well, five weeks ago, the company IPO'd at $6. There's no fundamental issue or nothing that should cause the stock stock to fall 62% from open to low of day today. It doesn't make any sense for me. When people are fearful, I'm optimistic in a play that I feel confident about. I'm seeing value. I'm seeing an opportunity here. And again, at low of day, which by the way, we called out, we accumulated here. We are taking advantage of the dip, right? We have options to add more. If it goes lower, we're anticipating more downside. But on this process down of trying to dollar cost average in, if we just look conservatively from the low to three. 70, which I believe is a very realistic target, that's already 60%. Right now we get to that 200 day, we're at 95%. We get back to IPO price, which again was not even a month ago, right? It's pretty much 160% upside. So it's really, really interesting again to see the potential and see the opportunity when others are fearful and just keep peppering it the lower it goes so that eventually you have a really solid average that's like right here. Maybe the stock bottom's there and it starts to curl and you're sitting there like, wow, maybe I got five or 10 cents off of the floor and now you're up 70, 80% while the average person's setting their alert there for the breakout. And then it gets the juice and then it's up 100, 150, 200% and you're loving it as people are you know, FOMOing in all at the top here. And that's, again, just the reality of the situation. But keep CHRO on watch. I think it's going to get a lot of traction over the next week, two, three weeks, right? I think without a doubt, it's going to bounce back. Just needs a little bit more sentiment, some buyer attention, a little bit of love on the buy side. And I think without a doubt, this is going to move quick. It's very, very tight. Only traded 35,000 shares today. Without a doubt, a little bit of volume and buying could really send this thing flying. Okay, the next is VTGN saw a monster gap up and explosion here from a low of 175 all the way up to $24. That was like a 1300% run, came back down, cooled off, and it's pretty much just been like range trading, right? The low that we saw here is like 230. Pretty much the floor is somewhere around three bucks, and it doesn't go above 590. So it's staying in a pretty tight range. Let's say anywhere between a two to three dollar range here. It's just been consolidating for quite some time. If we look at that time frame below. Okay. What I really love about this is the balance sheets, right? It has a hundred million cash on the books. That's huge. That means we're seeing 50 to 60 months worth of cash. No immediate dilution is necessary. I think Wall Street will love that because they know nothing is going to negatively impact the price as long as everything else remains constant. We're not going to see any dilution or any need to, again, go to the street to raise capital. So that's great. And what we're seeing here is just long-term accumulation. It's just sitting there, coiling and coiling and coiling. And then eventually, I think if we could break, you know, the high of this sequence, 758 and change, it's very possible we could retest these upper levels here. And it really wouldn't take a lot of juice to do it. Again, another pretty tight stock. When you're looking at the volume each day, this thing could definitely get some traction and some legs quick. So keep it on your radar, VTGN. Next stock 
here is going to be AMIX. We called this out at like 275 today, right? Making sure people are taking advantage of this dip opportunity, looking to break this downtrend here, right? We see pretty much from IPO, very similar to what we just showed you with Chromacell, right? It just keeps going lower and lower and lower. And finally, I think it's going to get that break and really start to explode. We saw that false break out there. We called the video out, I think at 280. And then the next day it went to 410. So that was like plus 45% in one day after we put out our original post on AMIX. And I think we're just ready and coiling up for round two. I don't think this is over. I don't think it was just a one day pop. I think good news is going to come over the next few weeks. And we're really going to start to see this thing play out and show its true colors. Now, pretty much where I called it 275, 280, it's pretty much right there. So if we just get back to the high six, seven days ago, which was 410, that's still 40 to 50% upside. That's our first target, right? Once we get over the daily here at a 352, right? The high here is 410. And the next level would be 450. So I think very, very conserved. This should be a 40, 50, 60 uh, percent play, maybe even upwards of 70 percent, I would say, is still kind of conservative. Right. I think our main targets 570, which is about 100 percent or a double up. And if it really starts to get good news and traction, it's easily possible we see seven, eight dollars and back to that IPO price, which, by the way, was the last month in January. This has been like four or five weeks. Right. It really hasn't been that long. So again, pay attention there. The upside potential up to 171% from where we are currently. Definitely, definitely keep it on your radar ticker AMIX. The next one, which I just took a position in, was Viri uh, at 42 cents on Friday. If you've been following me long enough, you know that we called this out a year ago at 35 cents. It rocketed all the way to 250 here. That was like plus 600%. This was my biggest call out last year, without a doubt. Tracked this very, very well. Executed to perfection. I think our stop loss in pre-market was 205, 190. We exited very, very quick. And then knife down so it was definitely the right decision extremely well executed and i'm looking to do the same thing again uh this time around a year later now i hope the company is further down the line in terms of milestones and progress with the data and specifically their fibromyalgia drug i'm very very interested in possible buyouts there's talks of acquisitions or again just being way further ahead from a fundamental standpoint than they were a year ago not that much dilution i don't think there's going to be any problems in terms of reverse split i think we should have another six months. I don't think there should be any immediate dilution either. All things that, yes, we want to be concerned of, make a cautious note of mentally, but nothing that I think is going to really stop this before you know getting to that price target that we're looking for. Now, short and simple in terms of the technicals, I don't want to spend too much time on breaking it down, is we're seeing a support and resistance flip, and we're hoping that it flip-flops again. For anyone that doesn't understand, the visual is like this, right? The price used to bounce on the top end of the line like that. Now it's broken down and is now doing the opposite. So what we see here, right, here's the high of the run a year ago at 250, comes all the way down, it bounces here once, it bounces here twice, and it sort of goes one, two, and then here is where it crisscrosses. Now it just sort of does the opposite. That's all it is. It's a very simple visual. So what we're expecting is to get back to this supply zone where, again, you saw a previous support turn resistance. And what we would like to see is to check this box off and say, OK, we come up and test it, but we want to break it and then retest it as support before taking that next leg. We don't want to just test it and reject, which is what we've seen in the past. OK, so either way, whether or not it breaks it or not, that would be our first target. So at 42 cents here, right, going all the way up, let's see, 42 cents to where the bottom line is, that's about 82, 83 percent upside. Getting to the 200 day be about 85 percent. And if we go to the top end of this range, that's about 100 percent. Now, I think realistically, Viri should be trading somewhere in this, you know, dollar, dollar 50 range. So if we do get to a dollar plus, that could be 140, 160, 200 percent upside if we get back to those highs a year ago it's very possible this could be a three four five hundred percent runner it's basically like a hard reset you know you got a round trip ticket all the way right back to the level there okay in terms of my risk to reward we could be very conservative and go down to 40 and a half cents here which would pretty much be like a 13 14 percent risk to reward or we can go to the low on friday which is about 25 percent okay i like my chances there to at least at minimum go 60 70 percent up from the close even greater from my average 80 85 percent from my average. So that's pretty much where I'm at. I love Viri in terms of valuation. It's not a lot of downside risk. I think without a doubt, if we see some good news, all 
those rumblings and rumors are true, um, it could be massive, right? We could see a huge, huge surge and possibly a multi hundred percent bagger here. OK, so let's just take a look at the list, see if there's anything else real quick. I would say CDTX. I have no idea if this is going to get good news and start to take off, but it looks very similar to NKGN, which I'll show you in a moment. This is a one year downtrend. This was March 23rd of 23. Now we're pretty much again a year and one day after we see the multiple touch points. It's just down and down and down. And I have no idea if it has to go down one more time before running or if we're about to break out. I have no idea. But again, it's retesting the top of this trend line that it hasn't done that in a while. So I just want you guys to be cautious. As you can see, I set some alerts here just in case it starts to break. It's also lining with that 200. It could get explosive after, you know, just seeing compression and compression and compression. And then it pops and you see something like this, like NKGN, right? Not that long ago, it went public right here, jam down, pop, 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 pop. And then finally it breaks. And again, the same resistance here is what we showed you before, right? This is the same thing as this, right? What you're seeing here, the sort of rejection off the line is the same thing. It's just angled, okay? So it's just very simple or textbook resistance that finally broke out. Look at the level, 78 cents all the way up to $4. How interesting is that? We go back to CDTX, right? How interesting is that? The price is pretty much right at 78 cents where it looks like it wants to break out. So maybe that's, you know, a similarity there and it goes big. Who knows? But I just want to, again, bring it to your attention, something to keep on your radar. The next ticker surge, it's all a matter about the government contract. They re-up the contract, and I think the revenues either stay equal or greater. You have a very, very good chance that you retest either $7, $8, or $9 range in this section without a doubt. I think if the revenues continue to stay equal or greater and that contract is re up this will surge, no pun intended. Okay, so this could be a very good 40, 50% return on your investment easily, you know, if positive news comes 40, 70, 90%. And then if we get back to where we were a month ago, right, that'd be 125% upside. Okay, it's a matter of if, I don't know, it could be positive news, it could be negative news, and the stock can get absolutely crushed, right? But if it is positive, if that contract continues for the next few years, and they're going to generate big revenues the way that they have recently, again, I think that price is definitely going to be in that double potential, or again, another 100% return on your investment. CELU pre-split. This was a two to three dollar stock, in my opinion. Now we see 10 to one. So 520 is really 52 cents. If we zoom out, right, we see the real value here. I think without a doubt, we could be seeing a massive rounding bottom. And again, if the fundamentals improve, if the IP and everything plays out the way management says, okay, this could be a monster stock. Not today, not tomorrow, not a month from now or a week from now, months and years down the line. You look back, right? This was $13 pre-split. So again, that would be $130 post-split. It's all a matter of value. And this chart, the reason why we started looking at it is it looks like Jasper, right? Right as you saw the split, it rallied. And we see within eight trading days, it's up 130%. We look at Jasper, right? We see the same exact thing, one to 10, and then it rockets 600%. So CELU, a lot of similarities here. It's all a matter of your belief in the company. I think it looks coiled, ready to go. But again, it's just something that's on my radar. I'm not actively playing it or really staying too on top of it. I just want to, again, bring it to your attention. The next would be Gain Therapeutics. Everyone knows I talk about GANX. This is a multi-billion dollar acquisition potential. This is not something that you're going to trade up and down 50, 60 cents. This is an investment stock, a long-term slow burner play. A prime example of when people are fearful is when you should be opportunistic right in this situation at 360, 365. This is a no brainer. This could get bought out for 20, 30, $40 a stock. Multi-billion would it be? Just look at the management, look at their past experience and the $30 billion worth of acquisitions they have. Okay. And then get back to me. Koya is another one, just a monster here. I'm expecting a retest of $8. The reason why is eight was the quadruple top. It didn't want to break. Typically, like all the stocks we see, they break out, they retest, and they continue. So liquidity could either be very strong at 880, and this is the floor, but I think it's likely it comes and retests eight 
before bouncing. Still a monster stock, ran 120% from our call out at 484, all the way up to just shy of $11. Really a good one. Not one I'm going to chase up here because it's it already played out the exact way we envisioned it. But this is a company I think could get bought out even before gain does, maybe $15, $20 a share, somewhere in that $10 to $20 range, I think makes a ton of sense. Definitely some institutions and funds behind this. A lot more volume and buyer interest lately, which is all great signs. The next one, Podcast One, definitely a great value. I think without a doubt, this will be a five, six dollar stock long term. It's not a stock I'm looking to trade up and down 10, 20 cents. I'm looking to hold it for a minimum of a year, really accumulate. If they want to sell me stock cheap, I'm going to continue to buy it. If they sell it to me under 170, I'm going to absolutely blast it. Right. My average is sub 170. I think again, it's just a no-brainer. Not worried about losing. I think there's no way I lose on this play. Even if it gets back to 260, I'm up 60%, which it just was not but a week ago. It gets to 315. That's pretty much 90%. It gets on the north side of, you know, 320, 330 here, right? We're doubling up. I think without a doubt, we get back to five or six. Not right now, not next week or next month, but we will in due time. And that'll be 150 to 250% upside, which most people won't hold for, but that's okay. Right, I like different perspectives on stocks. Not every single one is going to be a quick pop, sell, and move on. There are some real fundamental companies that are going to grow and be extremely valuable over time. And those are the ones that we want to hold, add to our retirement, really accumulate size in. Podcast one, gain, those are the type of tickers you want to do that. OK, so I pretty much gave you an incredible breakdown here. Please leave a comment in the section below if you like these types of breakdowns. If you're making money with us, have you traded any of these tickers? I love to hear this information and get feedback from you guys. Please let me know in the section below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider smashing that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on those post notifications. And what's even more important to me is if you could share this video and really spread it around. If there's discords or whatever rooms you can get it on, different platforms, wherever you're allowed to share this video, please do that for me. Get it in front of more eyes. We're putting a lot of time and attention into quality stuff and me really sharing my perspective with you, getting intimate and trying to, again, get you guys to make money, get on the right track and be profitable over a long period of time. This year has been absolutely incredible for me. This is the best run ever to date in terms of picking stocks. We are absolutely on fire. Everything we're touching is running because we're getting behind real Credible stocks, no rumors, no BS, no garbage, no he said this, she said that, rumor this, none of that. It's all real fundamental plays, and that's why they're working. So stick with what's working. Get rid of the junk. If you want to come in the Discord, we're opening it up for the next day or two, right? Just send me a message on Twitter. I know everyone keeps asking in the comments, hey, can I, you know, send me a link? But YouTube doesn't allow it. You can't paste links in the comments. It doesn't work. So you have to go and do that on Twitter. Send me a message. If you can't get through me, just comment on one of my posts. I'll see the notification pop up and I'll reach out to you. Have a fantastic night, guys. As always, we'll see you in the next one.